AI is coming for your job. Well, maybe. When tractors and combines were invented, they definitely put a lot of low-skilled laborers out of business. If all you knew back then was how to push a plow, you were in trouble. But is farming totally obsolete today? No way. The farmers who were stuck in the same old way of doing things were put out of business, but the farmers who chose to leverage and take advantage of the new technology thrived and were more productive than ever before. Same principle applies to tech. I mean, if you're a junior developer who just Googles, copies, and pastes code all day, I'd be a little bit nervous. If you're a copywriter who just writes words without deep human touch, I'd be worried. If you're a business owner who isn't actively thinking about how artificial intelligence might enhance your solution, you're probably going to get outmatched here pretty soon by the competition. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Look at all the companies rapidly adding AI to their product right now. Snapchat is using it as an experimental product for casual chats or even for help with custom poetry about friends. Instacart is using it to enhance their search feature so users can get inspirational, shoppable answers to their food questions. Shopify has added a new shopping assistant feature, which makes personalized shopping recommendations based on user requests. And these are just a few of the thousands of services out there turning to AI to enhance their offering. Here's the cold hard truth. If you ignore AI or think you're good without it, you're probably going to be in trouble. But if you embrace and leverage AI to your advantage, you'll be more potent than ever. It is your destiny. So I'm assuming you're not a gajillionaire with access to funding and devs and resources to build your own proprietary AI model. If that's the case, this video is for you because I'm about to show you exactly how to create your own white labeled custom artificial intelligence app powered by OpenAI's ChatGPT API, which just launched today, by the way, in 20 minutes flat without writing a single line of code. You ready? Let's do this. All right, so when you're in your bubble account, you'll see something like this. You'll hit create an app. And I'm just going to go ahead and say chat GPT 44. And I'm going to create the app. Now, when you first create an app, Bubble has a little application assistant. You can just skip that for now. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is head to the plugins section, add a plugin, and this top one right here, this is the number one used plugin by Bubble users. So go ahead and click install and done. Now, you're going to want to add an API. What API? Well, remember, we're connecting with ChatGPT. So let's go to platform.openai.com. Go ahead and click Get Started, Verify You're a Human, and Create an Account. You may need to verify your email. I'll do that real quick. All right, so once you have your account set up, you want to go to the API documentation. And for this, we're using ChatGPT, their brand new API powered by GPT 3.5 Turbo, whatever that means. But that's what we're using. Now, if you want, you can read through this guide just to kind of get more familiar with it. But I'm going to go straight to the API reference for this ChatGPT product. And again, I don't know how to code. So what I'm looking for is this curl code right here. I'm literally going to just copy this curl code and I'm going to go back to my bubble editor and I'm going to go to this button right here that says import another call from curl. And I'm going to paste what I just copied and import. Now this old one, I could just trash because I don't need it anymore. And now this API I can call chat GPT. And as you can see, bubble automatically imported the entire call and structured it exactly how we need it to be structured. Well, almost exactly. The only thing we need to replace is we need to put our API key right here instead of these words. So let's go back to OpenAI and click Personal and go to View API Keys. Now, you're going to want to create your very first key and copy it, and you'll never be able to see it again so make sure you got it copied and then go straight back to bubble and in place of the your API key words, just paste that key. 
Now we should be good to go. The prompt we're giving to ChatGPT is hello. Let's see what ChatGPT says back. If I initialize this call, hooray, it worked. Now, how do I know it worked? Because this pop-up here is showing all of the returned values that OpenAI is sending back to us after having received our prompt. So I always kind of like to look here at the raw data here. Now, OpenAI is sending us an ID, which I don't really care about. It's sending us an object, sending us a bunch of mumbo jumbo here. It's sending us kind of how many tokens we used. You can look at their pricing and see how much a token is worth. And then it's sending us the response. That's what I really care about. It's saying, hello there, how can I assist you today? So that's what I care about. So if I go back up here, I don't care about this, so I'm just gonna ignore it. I don't care about this, I'm gonna ignore it. I don't care about this, 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 or this. The only thing I really care about is the choices section that contains the message that contains the content. So I can even get rid of the role, I don't care. I know that it's my robot assistant. <laughs> I do care about the message content. I don't care about the finished reason for now, and I don't care about the index for now. Now I can hit save. The last thing we're gonna wanna do real quick before we move on is we don't want to always say the word hello to the ChatGPT, right? We wanna be able to type in whatever we wanna type. So let me go ahead and highlight this. And Bubble says, use these open caret, close caret symbols for dynamic values. So let's do that. Cause this is, we don't want to always say the static hello. We want this to be dynamic. So let's go ahead and say open caret, close caret, and then just say user prompt or something like that in the middle. Now that gives us the ability to add our own custom user prompt. I'm gonna uncheck private here, and I'm gonna check private here and here because these will always stay the same. So now, for my user prompt, I could say something like, how old are you? And reinitialize the call, and now, as you can see, it's coming back with, I am an AI language model and do not have an age as humans do. All right, fine, hit save, and our API connection is ready to roll. Now let's build the UX. Let's go back to the design tab. Let's grab a group element, throw it on the page. Something like that should do. And I personally like to change the layout. So I'm gonna double click anywhere on the page and go to layout and then choose not a fixed container. I like to do like, maybe for this, we could do an aligned apparent container. So now I have my group and I'll make it a column container and I'll center it vertically in the middle of the page. Now I'm just gonna make this page background like a nice little gray here, just a subtle gray. And then I'll make this group itself, maybe just like a flat white, and I'll give it a little bit of a shadow and give it a roundness of 20. This will be our chat prompt box. Let's give this a title. So I'm gonna throw in a piece of text here, maybe something like that, and I'm gonna say, no code GPT. I'm so creative with my naming, I know. And I'm gonna hit center here, and I'm gonna go to layout and center the whole element. I'm gonna go to this group. As you can see, this text element is snug right up to the top of this group. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the padding and just give it a little bit of padding, like 30 all around, 30 pixels all around. Now I'm gonna bring this size up all right, next, I need a way for the user to type their prompt, right? So let's go and grab something called a multi-line input. And I'm just gonna throw that in here somewhere, maybe this size-ish. And I'm gonna remove the style and maybe make this, I like the, the font enter, and I'm gonna center this thing. Now I'm gonna grab a text element that will kind of serve as my button to submit. And I'm gonna remove the style and I'm gonna center this text, and I'm going to center the element itself, and now I'm going to go back to the appearance, make the line spacing one, and center the text vertically. Now, I don't want the button to be right up next to the input, so let's give it a little bit of margin here in the layout. All right, now let's go to the, back to the appearance and make the background maybe like a a blue, 
bring the roundness to like 20 or something. We can bring the font color to white. Now, I don't want it to say edit me. We can say something like submit. And we might even make it bold. Now, as you can see, there's some dead space here at the bottom. So let's go to the layout and let's bring this down to zero at minimum. And that way it'll just fit the height to the content that's within it. All right, so what's next? What do we want to have happen? When they type in this input and hit submit, well, we want it to give us an answer, right? So to give us an answer, what do we need to have happen? Well, we need to ping the OpenAI API, have ChatGPT process an answer for us, and then ping our app back with that answer. So let's right click on this button and start edit workflow. That means when they click on this button, what workflow will occur? Let's see. As you can see, that automatically took us to the workflow tab, which uses kind of like an if then logic. So if this text is clicked, then what do we want to have happen? Well, the first thing we want is we want to call that ChatGPT API. And it's not here because I need to go to the plugins. And right now I'm using it as data. I want to use it as an action. Now, if I go back to the workflow and I say chat GPT, there we go. We have our call. By default, we have how old are you, but we don't want it to always ask how old are you. We want it to be dynamic depending on what the user just typed in the input. So we'll insert dynamic data. And what data? Where do we get the text that we want? Well, from, let's go back to the design tab, this, from this multi-line input called multi-line input A, or you can name it whatever you want. Maybe I could name it prompt, something like that. So I'm just gonna copy all this, command C, and go back to my workflow and go back to the dynamic expression and say, I want whatever's inside of multi-line input prompt, I want its value to be the prompt. All right, that's awesome. We're going to call ChatGPT with our prompt and it should work. But how do we actually display the answer we receive? Well, let's go back to the design tab. And what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna copy and paste. So now if you go to the elements tree, you might notice that I have group A and I have group B. So group A, we're just gonna go ahead and say that's group prompt. And now I'm gonna hide that temporarily. And I'm gonna go to group B and I'm gonna call this group answer. Now, the answer I receive will be displayed here, so I don't need an input, so I'm just gonna trash that. And now I'm gonna go get another piece of text, throw that in here somewhere, remove its style, let's make it black, let's go to the layout, let's center it, let's get rid of its minimum height for now, and let's go back to the appearance, and let's say we don't want it to always say, edit me. We want it to say whatever the response from ChatGPT was, right? Well, how do we know what response it was? Well, that goes back to the workflow, and I'll show you that here in just a second. What we're going to do is we're going to take ChatGPT's response, and we're going to send it or display it in this group answer, right? So we need group answer to know what to expect, right? So let's go to the type of content and say, we're expecting what? Is it an image? Is it a file? What is it? No, it's text. So we're going to say the type of content of this group is going to be text. Now the data source is going to be empty initially because we don't quite yet have an answer from ChatGPT. But once we do, we will provide that data at that point. All right, so now back to the text element. Where is it? Let me open up my group answer, and we got the title here, and we got the text element that's flat because it has nothing inside of it, and I'm going to click on this dynamic expression and say I want to grab from the parent group's text, right? So this text, its parent is group answer, and group answer is what we're going to display ChatGPT's answer in. Maybe we'll make this italicized or something so it looks more like a quote from a robot, I guess. And then let's go to the submit button, and obviously they're not submitting anything here, so we'll just say ask something else. 
All right, so let's go back and start from the beginning really fast, just so that we're on the same page. We're going now to group prompt. So when they type something in and they click submit, I'm going to right click, start the workflow for that. I'm calling ChatGPT. What am I calling it with? Well, the prompt that they typed. And once I get my answer, I'm going to go ahead and hide group prompt because I have my answer. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to display the answer in group answer. What data do I display? Well, whatever ChatGPT answered. So let's click on this and say, we want the result of step one, whatever we got from step one, from that API call, we want to pull. Remember it was in the choices category and we'll say the first items message content. Okay, so we've hidden group prompt, we've shown the answer, but now we gotta actually show the element, group answer. Now, we're doing this hiding and showing of these groups, and I just realized we probably should real quick go to group prompt and say, you are visible on page load, and group answer, you are not visible on page load, because we'll just be showing this group in that workflow after we receive the answer. We're not quite there yet, but let's just give this a preview and see where we're at. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this question mark debug mode equals true, just because that this is bubbles debug mode and it is useful, but right now I just wanna see the app as a user would see it. So I'm gonna delete that and refresh. So I've got my no code GPT and I'm gonna go ahead and type where are you from? I'm so creative. I'm gonna hit submit, it's doing some thinking, and boom, we have an answer. Awesome. Well, let's ask something else. Well, nothing's happening. I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Why? Well, because we didn't build the workflow for that. So let's go back and let's click ask something else, right click and start the workflow for that. And what do we want to have happen? Well, we wanna go back to the prompt group and hide the answer group, right? So let's do that. Let's just say hide group answer, show group prompt, and let's see what that gives us. Let's refresh the page. Let's say, give me one sentence about New York City. Submit, and there it is. Now let's try our ask something else workflow. If I click ask something else, it goes back. But I see a problem here. I don't want my last prompt to be in that input. I want it to be erased and cleared out so I can ask a brand new prompt. Let's do that real quick. If I go back here, after I've hidden the group prompt, I've displayed the data, I've shown group answer, I want to do one last thing called reset relevant inputs. That should get rid of what's stuck in here. Let's refresh the page and give it one more try. Write me a poem about how cool no code is. Submit. Boom. There we go. We've got an answer. Now, how could we enhance this? Well, I noticed when I enter a prompt and I hit submit, it's thinking, it takes a few seconds to think through that. So why don't we display its thinking visually? Well, let me show you how to do that. So let me go back to the bubble editor. And if I go to the submit button and I click this eye icon here, I'm gonna add a custom state and I'm gonna call it thinking question mark. And I'm gonna say this will be either yes or no. And I'm gonna say, normally it's not thinking, but when I click it, so let's right click, start the workflow. When I click it, well, I'm gonna right click on step one and insert an action to be even before step one. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna set the state of this text element, this text submit, and what state am I setting? the thinking one I just barely created, and I'm gonna say yes, it is thinking. And now at the very end, we, we can go ahead and copy that and paste that, and after it's done thinking, well, it's done thinking, right? So we're gonna set that back to no, but initially it's gonna be yes. Now, let me go back to the design tab and say, 
If I go to the conditional tab of this button and define another condition, if I say when this text's thinking is yes, I want it to show something different. So I want the text to be something like processing dot, dot, dot. And even better, I want it to maybe have a little spinner icon. So just FYI, this, I'm going to paste this code here. This gives you a little spinner animation, just FYI. All right, let's just see how this looks now. I'm going to refresh the page and say, how tall is the stratosphere in Las Vegas, question mark. If I hit submit, as you can see, it's processing. So that adds a nice little touch. Now let's ask something else. Let's just do something fun here to enhance it just a little bit more. Let's go to a place called lottiefiles.com and let's search for a robot animation. I like this one here. So I'm going to download and I'm going to download the Lottie JSON file. Now let's go back to our bubble app. After I input the prompt, maybe I want the answer group to look a little bit more friendly. So I'm going to hide the prompt group, show the answer group, and let's just get rid of this title. Let's just put the bot right there. So the way to put a Lottie JSON file in is you're going to need to go to the plugins section and hit add plugins and say Lottie. And the one I like is called Lottie Animations Maintained. So install that, totally free, and go back to the design tab. And now that we've installed that plugin, if you search here, you'll see the Lottie element. Grab that, drop it onto the group, and let's go, let's try something like 200 by 150, something like that. Let's center it. And let's go to the Appearance tab, and let's upload that JSON file that we just downloaded. All right, let's give that a shot and see what it looks like. Refresh the page here in our bubble run mode. And now let's say, how are you today? Question mark. Submit. We got our nice processing animation. And there it is. So there you have it. There's my 20 minute creation of a custom software powered by the most advanced artificial intelligence on the planet, all in exactly 20 minutes. Now, the only question is this, are you going to ignore the knowledge you've just gained or are you going to leverage it to create the tech business of your dreams? I'm gonna use it. That's up to you. And if you ever decide you'd like a consistent mentor for either the business or the tech side of things, feel free to check out my full academy at nocodeadvantage.com, where I help non-technical entrepreneurs build profitable tech businesses. We do live workshops each and every Friday. We have a growing community and hundreds of thousands in perks and discounts as well. But regardless, thanks for checking out this video. I really appreciate you spending a piece of your day with me. And if you're interested in more free tutorials like this, be sure to lightly tap that subscribe button for me. Don't smash it, please. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.